there's a lot going on. Uh, let's start with the NBA. Uh, so this this disturbed me deeply. I don't, maybe I'm caught off guard here or I'm the only one, but why are these basketball players who are coming into our country to play basketball, and of course we all love to see basketball, why do they get a national interest exemption? Very good question. I mean, I'm happy for them. I'm glad they got their exemptions I and mean, everybody should be, if who wants an exemption should be able to get one. I don't think anyone should be forced to get a medical treatment against their will. However, uh, case, uh, I, again, rules for thee and not for me. So people who are making the policy decisions often, you know, the politicians and their friends or their friends who are in, you know, places of power, you know, heads of uh, sports leagues, that type of thing. Um, and, you know, players who have a lot of money, they can make things happen. So often they're the ones who get uh, special treatments during these times of very uh, our onerous rules and not the regular people because, I mean, who's going to fight for you, right? So this is the irony. These people can come in, they can uh, play uh, in our stadiums, which I think is great. However, if you do not want the jab, you can't go and watch them play in the stadiums. Okay, so in their defense, they are restricted to the court, like where they right. play basketball, and they're restricted to their hotel room. It's not like they're going out mingling in society. They're not going shopping. They're not going to restaurants. It's a very controlled circumstance in which they're monitored, I guess, and, and only allowed to be in certain places. So if if the concern is controlling spread with, with these kind of restrictions, well, they're pretty restricted. So isn't that good enough? I mean, there are so many hundreds and maybe thousands of of persons employed by these kind of large gatherings, these these you know basketball venues, baseball venues, and whatnot, is it not just making economic sense to find let a handful of these players in? They're not going to go out anywhere. Why don't we just get on with the program? I think this type of um, double standard breeds a lot of discontentment and anger uh, with people because, again, I mean, you know, many people are upset about um, these rules, and it doesn't look good when it only applies to. The majority of people or some people and not everybody. So if we're going to have rules like this, I think that has to be even for everyone across the board, for the people who are making the rules and for the people who are underneath them and all the way down to the little people. Um, we can't have exceptions like this. So either we don't have rules like this and that's the, the ideal um, the ideal way, or if we're going to have rules like this, everybody has to follow them. Otherwise you create a two tier society, even if it's maybe only in some cases, or only for certain periods of time, that type of thing, but we are creating a two tier society. Okay. And, and think of it, on, on the flip side is that to enter the venue, to access the venue as a spectator, uh, whether there are a thousand or 10,000, because depending on where you live in the, in the country, they have different capacity limits, but you have to show proof of vaccination. You yourself cannot attend the venue. You cannot watch the basketball game if you don't have a vaccine. However, somebody gets an automatic exemption because they're uh, a national interest exemption. They get qualified for that. So I can see how, as you said, it breeds uh, div division and discontent within society. You know, you hear persons who are at university, they're employees. You know, maybe they're the cleaning lady at university and they don't get an exemption and they're going to get fired perhaps if they don't get a vaccine. Why not these multi-million dollar athletes? Yes, that's the, that's the question. And I mean, I know so many people right now who are losing their jobs because they don't want the jab or the parents, friends of mine who are parents can't take their kids to soccer practices anymore. They can't take them to skating lessons, swimming lessons, that type of thing. One of my friends, um, she arranged, uh, you know, kind of backyard sports games for her friends and their kids, their little four to eight year olds outdoors. And someone called the police on them and a police officer showed up and scared all these little kids and they just wanted to enjoy some sports and be left alone. Um, so if, you know, these little kids are looking up at their heroes on the TV screen and they can't go see them in person, what type of messaging does that uh, tell them? You know, you will never be able to get there or you can't um, play your favorite sport because you don't want the job, but these people can. It well, just, I guess if you want to watch the sport, then you have to be a multi-million dollar NBA athlete and, and then you get an automatic <laughs> exemption. Anyhow, we've exactly. got much more to cover and we'll be right with you in a few moments.